I'm Uddhav Tiwari and I'm a public policy advisor. So moving on from non-personal data to what is non-personal data, the way the Indian government is thinking about it. Everything, like I said earlier, that is in personal data is non-personal data, which means that if you're an e-commerce platform, the insights of what your top 100 sold products are to what are the top localities where you traditionally deliver in what time of the day, all of these are examples of kinds of non-personal data that the government is thinking of regulating here in India. Specifically, the government has come out with this report called the Non-Personal Data Report that a committee of experts have worked on for about a year. And that report tries to create non-personal data into three distinct categories. The first is public non-personal data, which is non-personal data that is created either by the government or is otherwise funded by taxpayer money in a way that society has a greater claim over it. A very good example of this is a lot of the uh, data sets that are available in uh, data.gov.in, which is the government's open data portal that has data sets that provide some very fascinating aggregated insights into how everything from public delivery of services to transportation works in many parts of India. The government, by explicitly recognizing this as public non-personal data, hopes to encourage government departments to share it and also to allow for this data to be used for innovation in the ecosystem in India at large. The second category of data, and this is where it gets very interesting for companies and startups, is private non-personal data. Private non-personal data is that data that will belong to companies and startups, but they may be required to share it in its raw form with competitors or with the government when the need arises. This report is deliberately quite vague in distinguishing between raw and processed data and explicitly carves out the fact that algorithms and other proprietary information will not have to be shared as a part of this private non-personal data that companies collect. However, even just in the raw data set format, using the example that I gave earlier of e-commerce platforms, one can easily see why insights such as the top sold products, the top uh, customers and their localities in a region while without being associated with personal data are very integral for a platform to be able to decide what kinds of services it wants to provide at what time and in which area. And the fact that these may have to be shared with other players is something that many companies will likely be wary about and the government will have to work a fair bit in order to assuage many of the concerns that people have raised when the report first came out and that we would also be talking about later on in this conversation. And finally, there is community non-personal data, which is where the government creates a sense of a community and says that any group of individuals that have a common sense of community between them or a common bond between them can demand non-personal data about themselves. Now, this community could be a residence welfare association. It could be people who live in a particular village. It could be people from a particular tribe. It could also be people who are impacted by a particular event in some form. And the government says that the community must be allowed access to this non-personal data so that they can be used for the development of that community, which is an ethos that is very similar to how resources have been looked at in the context of mining law and, and other forms of sort of extractive processes all over, not just in India, but the world. Which is why this idea of community non-personal data is probably the most nebulous aspect of the report and is probably also going to be the one that is going to be the most controversial. Because as we will see later on, there may be conflicting demands from different parts of the community asking for non-personal data for completely different reasons. And at that point of time, it will be companies and startups that will have to make a call between which community to serve and how to decide whether they whether the kind of data that the community is demanding is actually data that must necessarily be shared with them. Because of the fact that we don't really have a concrete law and all of these things are just present in a broad high level report, it's quite hard to actually imagine how these things would operate in practice. But in terms of mere categorization and thinking through some of these ideas, these three broad categories are essential to understand how the Indian government is thinking about non-personal data.